Today, I traveled down to Taveras, Florida to meet up with National Corvette Restore Society National Judging Team Leader John Perrette. He's the technical advisor for manual transmissions 1955 to 1982 concerning transmissions. And he's going to explain all about manual transmissions. Here we go. Mark Meldrum, Meldrum's Monster Garage, traveled all the way down to Florida today to visit John Perrette. And here he is, the Muncie man. And uh, he's been to our Chevelle show numerous times. And John's taken the time out of his day to meet with me. And actually, we're down here to get some advice on uh, shift linkage. But he's going to go over some cool facts on the Muncie transmissions. So I'm going to give it to him. Hi, Mark. Thanks a lot. It's been a few years since I've done a tape. I wanted yeah. everybody to know that now I'm down in Florida from Ohio. So uh, I figured I would do a like a lightning rod show on some just some interesting facts about Muncie's that a lot of people don't know about. And the first ones I want to do, and I'm going to go really fast, so you may be using your uh, uh, your backup on this video to kind of catch some of this stuff, because <laughs> okay. I'm going to be flying. So one of the first things that I think a lot of people don't understand are speedometer gears. And speedometer gears are inside the transmission. They're in the tail housing. They're the driving gears. And these gears are all different. And if you don't have the right gear on the inside of your tail housing, you're going to end up not having the correct uh, speed on your, on your speedometer, or you may end up with broken gears because they're different sizes. I'm going to go through these real quick, so hold on. So this is a, this is a, a gear, it's a driving gear, and it's only for 456 gears. This gear here is for 355s through 411 gears. This gear here is for 355 gears and lower. This gear here is for the 71 through 74 transmissions, and it's different because it has a bigger hole for the bigger output shaft. These two plastic gears were used in 69 and 70, and they're plastic and they're held on by a little clip. And uh, if you need any more information on any of this stuff, you can give me a call because I know I'm going fast. So, the next thing I want to talk about are front bearing retainers. Muncie's have three different, size, uh, three different size front bearing retainers. So, in 63, when they first came out with the Muncie's, they used this aluminum front bearing retainer, and it's about four and an eighth inch in diameter. Later in the year, starting around March of 1963, they went to a cast iron one. They're both the same size. This one seemed to hold up a little bit better. After that, they went to a larger front bearing retainer. These, this is the same size front bearing retainer that was in cars all the way back to 55. So it's only 63 that's got the small. And this 63 was used in Saginaw's, T10's, and Muncie's. So these are the Muncie front bearing retainers. And you have one that's thin. It was used from 64 through 67. And then they made it a little thicker starting in 68. And this is the one that took us all the way to the end of the Muncie in 1974. Next thing I want to talk about is this left-handed nut that goes on the front of an input shaft. A lot of people don't know that it's left-handed. And as a result of that, they put a pipe wrench on them and mm. they mess them up pretty bad. But it is left-handed. It screws on left-handed. And there's a special tool that you can use to tighten it up. And there's a small hole in the input shaft. And that is where the nut gets staked. So you stake it with a punch and that holds it in place. The next thing that a lot of people have confusion about are sliders. Everybody thinks, or no, not everybody, but a lot of people think that they're the same. They aren't. They're different when they are OEM. Now, the replacements that you can buy, the reproductions, they are all the same. But in an original transmission, this is the, this is the slider that's used for uh, first and second. And if you notice, this side is beveled. And that's beveled like that, so it won't, it won't hit... Uh, it won't hit second gear. This one here is for uh, for third and fourth, and it does not it is not beveled. So you can see one is thick and one is thin. If you cross these, the the uh, car is going to jump out of gear because <laughs> this one will not will not allow the slider to go all the way up mm -hmm. through the engagement teeth uh, of the of the gear. 
Good catch. Yep. <laughs> Next one. We're going to talk about these things called shift shafts. These are the things that go through the side cover or the tail housing, and they allow you to attach your shifting linkage to the transmission. The early ones for 63 and 64 had a quarter inch 20 coarse um, stud on them, and they were a little weak. So starting late in 64, they went to this 5 16th fine, and it's got flats on the side, and uh, that strengthened it up quite a bit. In 68, they took the cast part that was on the bottom and it made it, a, I think that's billet steel, I'm not positive, but, but they made it a little stronger in 68. In 69, they changed from studs that use nuts to bolts mm -hmm. and uh, with just a hole drilled in them. And uh, the 69s are 69 only. So a lot of people think that they're all the same, but the 69s are actually shorter than the 70 through 71s. And you can see there's a little bit of difference there in the height. So this one is the longer one. It's a it's a it's a sixteen it's a sixty nine and up. No, this is sixty nine. I'm sorry. This is sixty nine and this is seventy and up. And they're, they're a little bit longer. Later, uh, starting in seventy one, they had um, flats put in it for the transmission control solenoids. So when the car went into fourth gear, it would actually detune the transmission. Something that was done back uh, in the early seventies. I told you I was going fast. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Okay, so so this this is all about the cluster gear shaft. So the cluster gear goes in here in the bottom and has needle bearings inside. And then this shaft goes through the case from the back through to the front. And, and there's only one way to put this in. Yes. Because I ran across the transmission. Somebody put it in in reverse. Uh, so yeah. that's not a good thing, right, Chad? It's not a good thing. It, it really wrecks the case. And some people pound them out through the front, which is just as bad, and they enlarge the holes and ruin the case. At any rate, the Muncies have a flat that's put on the back, on the back of the shaft. And when you put it in, a lot of people don't pay any attention to the clocking of this shaft. But this 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 flat needs to be exactly horizontal with the ground. So it has to go this way. Mm -hmm. And the short side is on the bottom and the long side is on the top. And then when it gets pressed in, this long side sticks out from the case. And the reason that it sticks out from the case is because the mid-bearing retainer goes on top of that. And the mid-bearing retainer rides on this flat on the inside. So it rides just like this inside there. And it keeps it keeps the shaft from spinning. Now, gotcha. I got this one out purposefully because this mid bearing retainer was damaged because somebody did not have the flat horizontal, and they drove it in and damaged the mid bearing re mid bearing retainer. Mm -hmm. All right. So next item. Just, just to talk about some interesting facts on an M22, I just got through building this M22 below. It's a 1968 M22, and I just wanted to go over some of some little unknown things or confusing things about, about M22s. So until 1970, only M22s had drain plugs. So 70 and early, uh, 69 and earlier, uh, only, the, only the M22s had drain plugs. Nothing else had a drain plug. After 1970, mm -hmm. all M22s had um, had drain plugs as well as all the way through 1974. Um, so there was different tail housings for the the one that's unusual is the 1970 Chevelle with the LS6 engine. That one got what I want to call a 1971 M22, and the reason for that is it had it had the bigger tail housing, the bigger output shaft, the bigger bushings and everything, and that was only for the 70 Chevelle. And believe it or not, the Corvettes with 454s did not get the bigger tail housing mm -hmm. and the bigger output shaft until 71. Uh, this one here is a 68 that's on the floor. It's got a coarse input shaft in the front. Uh, starting in 1970 with the LS6 engines, they went to a fine spline. 
Uh, this happens to be a fine spline M22. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Anything else that we need to talk about? Drain plugs, large tail housings. I think that's it for M22s. Just some interesting things that. And a typically, lot of people you wouldn't use. see a groove. Right. You wouldn't see a groove on an M22 transmission. That's correct. They, right. they are not grooved. Now, you also have to be aware of the fact that some of the replacement transmission, replacement input shafts, did not get grooves either. So okay. the fact that you have no groove does not guarantee that it's an M22. It could be an M20 or an M21 right. just because it was one of those earlier reproductions. The new reproductions do have the same rings that they did originally. So the last thing I want to just go through in this lightning event is <laughs> tail housings. So we're going to go through these really quickly. This is a 730, 731 tail housing. It is for 63s only. Uh, it will work in later years, but it is a 63 only tail housing. And it's identified because it has what I call a, a, a fin on the bottom. Starting in, 60, in uh, 64, they came out with a 429. Uh, tail housing. This 429, the early ones, also had the fin. This is a 429, and it has what I call a plate on the bottom. Plate versus a fin. I think what was happening is people were jacking cars up back then, putting them on oh. on the fin, and they were breaking them, so they put a plate back there. It's still not good a place to jack it on, but I think GM did that in, just in defense. This tail housing here, a lot of people haven't even seen. This is for the Pontiacs, Oldsmobiles, and few Buick full-size cars that got Muncie's. Uh, just a quite a long tail housing, and it has a very long output shaft in it. Uh, the other thing, I, just jumping back to this 429 tail. This 429 tail was used in Corvettes in 64 only, but it was used in GTOs from 64 through 70. Uh, the first three that I talked about, these early tails, they had speedometer, the speedometer ex exited on the left-hand side, uh, starting, well, with, with the uh, long tails, as well as the uh, next one, uh, they exited on the, uh, the right-hand side, and they exited on a diagonal downward. So this was the, probably the most popular tail housing, and it's a, um, it's a 584, and it was used from 65 through 1970. And it has a small bushing like all the other ones that I've talked about so far. So starting in 1970, again, with the Chevelle LS6s and going on into 71 through 74, they came up with a bigger tail housing. It has a bigger, has a bigger bushing, bigger seal, and it was made for car Muncie's that had larger output shafts. You can see the differences in size. Mm -hmm. uh, and this took a different uh, it took a different drive shaft yoke. The drive shaft yoke is often referred to as a, a 400 turbo yoke. The only other thing that I want to point out is anybody using this this later large tail housing is that this tail housing is about three quarters of an inch longer, which means that if you're converting something that used to have the shorter, you're gonna to have to shorten your drive shaft by about three quarters of an inch to get it to fit. I hope you enjoyed my lightning fast it was uh, awesome. facts about Muncie's and I uh, uh, hope to hear from you guys. That's great. We'll get uh, John's phone number below here and uh, thank you for spending time with us this afternoon. All right, sorry I went so fast. No, that was great. Okay. I hope you enjoyed all that great information from John. Here's all the uh, tech sheets that we were going over as we talked about the different transmission parts. John has rebuilt several transmissions for myself, and he's rebuilt the transmission that we are currently putting in the 1970 SS Chevelle. So he's uh, actually collecting up a few more parts for us on that. He's also been to the Northern Ohio Chevelle show several times and put on seminars about transmissions. He rebuilds these on the side, so I'll list his phone number and email contact if you'd like to contact him or even watch some of my old videos where we actually rebuild some of the transmissions with John. Uh, please check it out or please check him out. All right, see ya.